One of my favorite TV shows of all time is Law and Order. You might remember this show, the, the original, the one from the 90s, right? Where you had cops and you had prosecuting attorneys and, and you would have a case that would take place at first and the cops will go investigating and then there will be the prosecution taking over the case. Is the person guilty or innocent? It made from an, an amazing procedural show. But here's the part that I've always loved the most. The detectives, the prosecutors, sometimes even the judges were not always the most just ones in the mix. In other words, those that we might have seen as heroes or, or people that we should emulate were always a bit off, a, a bit maybe too human for us. Uh, they were not always perfect and in fact often they were far from it. Isn't that the case with so many of our stories and our lives? I mean, after all, we look at ourselves in the mirror and we ourselves are not perfect. We, we're human once we make mistakes. We're not always just, we're not always loving, we're not always kind. We too tell stories about ourselves and about the world and those stories always, like any other stories we tell, tend to make us look better than we often are. The scripture text is no different. This, these are stories, and these are stories of a people. These are stories of a people trying to find identity, trying to figure out who they are in the midst of life, in the midst of their encounters with one another and their encounters with God. And today's story, counter story, today's antagonist is one of those that unfortunately has been possibly too maligned in religious circles. His name was Judas Iscariot. Yes, Judas, uh, the disciple of Jesus who, who lived life with Jesus, who saw Jesus' work, who, who was part of Jesus' entourage that went from place to place proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ, the good news of the kingdom of God being here. Uh, Judas, who, who was a zealot, uh, who, who seemed to be always a bit kind of on the outskirts of this group of 12, and yet always a part of it. Judas, the one we hear from mostly only around Holy Week, uh, one that often is said with a certain smirk in our faces, he might just have become the uh, most obvious villain in biblical stories. But that's a bit too simple. The reality, most likely, significantly more complex. These early Christian communities were trying to tell us a story about who this Jesus was. And, and these narratives around Jesus' death, uh, crucifixion and death, uh, about the last few days of Jesus' life, themselves are deeply complex. And, and so as they're, they're telling these stories and thinking about how these stories fit the ways that they're thinking about Jesus in their time, they begin to take a shape of their own. And Judas is a, a key character in how they tell these stories. And we've heard them, haven't we? And the text of scripture uses certain words. Uh, Luke and John actually used the kind of language that is deeply anti-Semitic, deeply problematic, a, a language that has caused a lot of pain in our own Christian tradition. Matthew and Mark, though a bit less on the anti-Semitic side, also paint him as quite an enemy. Uh, and, and they themselves kind of feed a certain way of thinking about Judas that might not be helpful for us. The text tells us that Judas was a bit of an opportunist. Remember the, the pieces of silver that he's given? Judas also, the text tells us, has a difficult end. He takes his own life and leaves us hanging, no pun intended, wondering, why did he do it? Why did he sell Jesus out? Why? Why did he now take his own life? Did he feel sorry about what happened? Is that why? Was he tired? 
of all the judgment around him. See, like the rest of us, Judas is a difficult character. But there are some things that we might want to think about together for just a few moments here together. And one of them is, is how we tell the stories and who are the enemies in the stories we tell, right? And why are, they, why are they the enemies in the stories we tell? What is it about these folks around us as we tell stories that make them our enemy? Sometimes our enemy is just one that, that we don't kind of connect with or we dislike. Sometimes an enemy is one that's done something to us and we're still holding a grudge against them. Sometimes our enemy is just someone that we believe might not think like we think or believe like we believe. We might not even know them. We just have heard. Sometimes an enemy is just someone who, for whatever reason over time, is part of a group of folk that we tend to see as other. We creating kind of our own category of person, erasing the distinctive character of each one of us. And so Judas created such a character for us. And we must be careful that we don't continue the mistakes uh, of the past in, in making categorizations that, that easily kind of flatten a person and that easily creates another in the midst of our life. That, that's just not helpful to our witness as people of love and faith in the world. I think the other thing that Judas reminds us is that there have been some biblical scholars who, who have told us that uh, what if Judas was not trying to block Jesus or to stop Jesus or to sell Jesus out, but instead in his mind, he was just trying to push Jesus to get to action. If he was indeed a zealot, right? Maybe, maybe he was just trying to, to push Jesus into a confrontation so that Jesus would show his power, so that Jesus would show that he was the, the one that God sent into the world to free, free the people uh, from the Roman Empire. Uh, may, maybe Judas was merely trying to to give Jesus an opportunity to show who he was. And, and then when everything failed, then, then he, he is so hopeless that he takes his own life. Maybe, maybe we really don't know what was really happening in his life. And he's become an easy fodder for our own assumptions and stereotypes. We too sometimes in our own lives, sometimes want to force something to happen. And often we make our own mistakes along the way. I think today's narrative, today's counter story, uh, today's antagonist reminds us to take a deep breath, to not make easy assumptions about who's in and who's out and who's good and who's bad. Uh, some of those moral categories actually blind us to the complexities of other humans and to the realities of life. Today's narrative also should invite us to being critical readers of the text and recognize that sometimes the text has created a situation that has brought a lot of harm. And especially in the Gospel of Luke and John, uh, a, a situation where occurred this deeply, uh, these deeply anti-Semitic kind of parts of the text have created such havoc among our Jewish brothers and sisters. And we should just acknowledge those <laughs> so that then we can move forward into the future uh, much more thoughtful about how we engage one another. And the last thing that I think this antagonist can teach us, just like those old Law & Order episodes, is to not, not make easy assumptions, to see the complexity within ourselves, see that complexity in the other, and then and then we together, as we tell stories, uh, telling them in ways that show the full humanity of people. The text often does this too. We should do it also in the church. So today, look around. Who are your enemies? Why are they? What stories do you tell about them? And in light of that, be thoughtful. And we together then, can hold these stories in tension and show that we serve a God who meets us in the midst of our complexities. 
who meets us in the midst of our stereotypes, who meets us in the midst of our prejudices and calls us to a different way. A way that freely acknowledges the full humanity of the other, their need for grace, our need for grace, and the salvation and new life that's available to all of us. Thanks be to God. Amen.